Welcome to our fourth video assembly. Today, Mary and Archie are going to read to us and our string orchestra from their own front rooms have recorded a piece by a Chelsea composer, Peter Warlock, from the Capriol Suite. So you're going to have some wonderful string music. But first of all, you're going to sing Be Thou My Vision. So please stand by your window and let all of London hear you singing Be Thou My Vision. The string orchestra are now going to perform the best dance from Peter Warlock's Capriol Suite. One, two, three. <laughs> The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 10, verses 24 to 32. Students are not greater than their teacher, and slaves are not greater than their master. Students are to be like their teacher, and slaves to be like their master. And since I, the master of the household, have been called the prince of demons, the members of my household will be called by even worse names. But don't be afraid of those who threaten you. For the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed, and all that is secret will be made known to all. But I tell you now in the darkness, shout out abroad when daybreak comes, but I whisper in your ear, shout from the housetops for all to hear. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. They are only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. What is the price of two sparrows? One cup of coin? But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. 
So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Boys and girls, Hill House, members of staff and family and friends watching at home, welcome to our morning assembly here taking place at St. Columbus. Again, we miss you very much, but we're delighted that in some ways we're able to stay connected uh, as part of your life at school and family and home. So welcome wherever you're watching this. I wonder if when you look back on lockdown, there'll be some things that you laugh about. Some of the kind of crazy things that you got up to or you saw or that just happened while we were in this extraordinary time. One of the things that I think we will look back on in time is haircuts. (laughs) Haircuts. Home haircuts. I wonder if in your household things have got a little bit crazy and that missing out on going to the hairdressers or the barbers, things have just taken off and kind of exploded. And maybe for those of you who've gone back to school, when you got back, you saw that some of your pals, your friends, just looked a bit wild. We've had a bit of hair cutting in my house under the supervision of my wife and my daughter, and they had quite a laugh cutting my hair. It's been a while since they got going on that. Just before lockdown, I was walking down the King's Road and I bumped into a friend, a colleague of mine, who is uh, also a vicar uh, in one of the local churches. And he was just coming out of the hairdressers or the, the barber's shop. Now, this friend of mine is a little bit older than me, and he definitely has a little bit less hair than me. And the thing that he said to me, as he came out of the barbers that day, he said, oh my goodness, I reckon that each hair on my head is worth about a million pounds. (laughs) Each hair on my head is worth about a million pounds. We chatted, we went our own ways, and afterwards my daughter asked me, said, Daddy, is his hair really worth a million pounds each? I had to explain to Olivia that no, I don't think so. What he was saying, he was kind of being funny, he was saying that the place where he gets his hair cut is pretty expensive. But he was also saying that because he's got so few hairs on his head, when he does go for a haircut, it kind of feels like he's paying a lot, a lot, for each hair that gets cut. So when he said, I reckon each hair on my head was cut for a million pounds, he was joking. The reading that I hope you've just heard has a picture of God saying, God counts every hair on our head. Now, the mathematics of that is pretty extraordinary. It's really a picture to say that there is no part of us that God is not interested in. There's no part of us, of our bodies, of our lives, that God doesn't take care of. Even the hairs on your head are counted by God our Father. I hope that whether you've got smart hair, crazy hair, grey hair, no hair, that you know that there is care. We're going to say our prayers now for our church community Uh, for our school community, and for our friends and families. Let us pray. Loving God, for the gift of this new school day, 
we give you thanks for the gift of being with friends in school, learning from colleagues, teachers, or for the gift of being at home with homeschooling as best we can for all the possibilities and delights of this day, we give you thanks. As you tell us of your care for each one of us, help us to take care and be careful of those who we know. Help us to be good friends, good family members, and always finding ways to offer our talents, our time, to the wider community. So bless us all. We pray for any who are ill at this time or worried. We pray for any who are far away and separated from their loved ones. And finally, we offer the school prayer together. Oh God, give us courage. Courage to try new things and not to be afraid of making mistakes. Courage to get up when we are down and to go on again. Courage to work with all our strength and to know that it is not the beginning but the continuing until it is completely finished that yields the true glory. Through Christ the Lord our God. Amen. Final blessing. Now go into love, to life, to learning and laughter and may the peace of God guide and protect you this day and always. Amen.